Fittingly, Junkman Stage has a bug infestation problem. A robotic bug infestation problem. They reside in these little hives that spew out an infinite amount of these little bastards. The Thunderbolt works well against them. These lava flows are instant death unless you're in a recovery state after a hit, but be careful anyway. And remember the spot later on. It's a secret passage we're here, but we don't have the weapon for it yet. Instead of dealing with these guys on the platforms, give this machine a shot of the Thunderbolt and it'll stop pulling the platforms up, giving you a quicker access to the ladder ahead. And once you climb it, jump up to the next ladder to get the rush jet. You wouldn't have been able to get it without the machine running. Then under all this trash is a large serpent that patrols the area, uses a scope to track your location, and then lunges out at you. Wait for him to clear the area first and then slide across to get by before he gets a chance to attack you. Then there'll be these floating platforms that change location and freeze for a bit. Each time they pause, a chunk of junk will land on the one ahead of you, so don't jump until after it lands and after you've destroyed it. Junkman does this leap, and when he lands, it'll freeze you in place and start a shower of trash, so jump right before he lands. He'll also absorb a bunch of junk into his hand and make a large boulder. Jump over it as he skids it towards you. Then he'll come down from the roof, I guess grabbing some junk for his junk shield, which is when you'll really want to avoid him. When you have the thunderbolt, it's easy. Just shoot him, slide under him as he jumps and chucks a chunk of junk at you, and then repeat continuously. He'll always repeat the same attack after you hit him with the thunderbolt. Once he dies, you'll get the junk shield, which will protect you from certain enemies, but each time it kills something, the shield starts to break down and becomes less effective, and you'll lose pieces of it. Obviously, Freeze Man is next, and just as obvious is the fact that the stage is ice-themed, so careful walking around. You don't want to slip off the edge in certain spots. One of the first enemies you'll encounter are these polar bears. All they do really is growl and then swat a chunk of ice that lands in front of them. Jump over the ice and fire at the center of his chest. These thin pieces of ice will fall apart if you stand on them too long or if these guys up on the ceiling drop a chunk of ice onto it. So keep that in mind as you walk across. You also want to use the ice that lands on the spikes as a stepping stone. Use the rush coil to get up here and quickly jump off the edges of these icy platforms to get the H icon. When you get here, take the top route, jumping from platform to platform and use the rush jet to get across the wider gaps to get the rush search adapter. Then hop down, use the danger wrap on this asshole, and move on. This polar bear has a different trick up his sleeve. In addition to the ice he fires at you, he'll also roar so loud that chunks of ice come falling off the ceiling. Run between that, take him down, and grab the easy e tank behind him. At the home stretch, there'll be a barrage of sleds with bombs that spill out of them, even after you destroy them. Use the thunderbolt, but be sure to stay at the same level as them so you don't get blasted with bombs. Freeze Man freezes up the floor and then summons the icicles to fall from the ceiling, using one of them as a charge for a shot that'll freeze you solid and makes you vulnerable for more damage. Slide under these shots and fire up the junk shield. Just make sure that the shield makes contact with him and not Mega Man himself. It doesn't protect you completely. Once he's destroyed, you'll get the Freeze Cracker, which fires off ice projectiles that split apart once they hit a wall or an enemy. So then you go back to Dr. Light's lab where they mention base, Dr. Light mentioning that he believes that base is on your side. Then Dr. Light's surveillance camera send him an automatic notification that the robot museum is being attacked by Dr. Wily. And so now it's on to the interlude stage, the robot museum. And if you're asking what the hell a robot museum is, just remember that in the Mega Man universe, robots have been very prevalent for a while now. So this isn't much of a level, it's just a gate to the boss right after some scenery of past Robot Master displays. Wily steals Gutsman and you're left to do battle with this clown fuck. Your target is his head. When you hit it, it'll decapitate him and the body and head will both bounce around the room. You can still hit the head while it's on the ground as long as he's not in a recovery state. He's also immune to damage right after he lands and his head is spinning around, so fire after he readjusts. The Danger Wrap seems to do the most damage, but because of its trajectory, you have to be pretty close to land the shot. So you might want to just stick with the charged up Mega Buster shot. You're going to need to wait while he's adjusting his head a lot anyway. The trickiest part is avoiding him and the head at the same time. Keep your eyes on both of them and don't get too reckless with your attacks. That's how you'll die. Once he's dead, go back to Dr. Light who informs you that Wily's robots are causing havoc on the city. So now you get the next batch of robot masters to deal with. But before that, now that you have the freeze cracker, head to Junkman stage and when you get to that flowing lava part, freeze it up and slide under here to go down the ladder. See this is what Proto Man was talking about. 
then freeze up the lava on the left and grab the rush S icon. Then go back to Cloudman stage and when you get to this guy here in the beginning that makes it rain, freeze him up and it'll turn to snow. Later on you'll see this platform underneath the ladder. Take the coil up to it and get the extra life. Then head left to get the rush U icon and now you have all four of them to give you the super adapter and you can use the jetpack. By the way, you're probably going to want to buy the exit ability before you return to all these stages in the interest of time. So now it's on to the next four robots. First one to choose is Slash Man. This level takes place in Jurassic Park it seems. This green stegosaurus will fire its scales overhead. Simply dodge them and fire at his head. Then these logs will roll down the waterfalls pretty fast. So jump on them as soon as you see it come up or you'll be too low to make it. Then you'll hit your right on this dinosaur that'll run across these spikes for you. Shoot down enemies in the air, and once the ride runs its course, hop onto the next dino. Hop onto this platform and take the rush jet up here to get an E-Tank. Then you'll get chased by a T-Rex. Watch out for these spikes as you run. You'll eventually be cornered and you'll learn that T-Rexes breathe fire, or at least Robo T-Rexes do. Avoid his fire and shoot him in the jaw. Wait to grab the energy capsule until you run low on health or defeat him. As you go through the woods, you'll see some hornets flying around their nest. You can kill the hornets, but don't disturb the nests. They'll just keep pouring out infinitely. Slashman is a pretty tough bastard. He'll hide up in the ceiling dropping eggs that splatter red shit. This red shit will hold you in place if you walk on it. And if the egg lands on you, you can move, but you can't shoot. Try to avoid the eggs, and when Slashman returns, he'll dive quickly at you with a slash attack. And then he'll hop around slashing at you. Hit him with the freeze cracker after he does his initial slash claw dive, and then he'll hop back up into the ceiling again. The best way to avoid his mad dash is to keep your distance and slide in the direction he's coming from, as long as there's no remnants of red glob in the way. Once you take him down, you'll get the slash claw, a pretty simple self-explanatory claw that's quick but has limited range. Next on your hit list is Spring Man. Right away, you'll see some springs on the floor. If you jump on one and hold down B, you'll get a higher jump, so use that here to get the bolt. As you make your way down this area loaded with springs, look down so you can see if there's an enemy waiting for you before bouncing down. Just make sure you bounce your way into this extra life over here. If you head down this way, use the danger wrap on this guy, and then get back up onto the platform. I advise you not to even try making the jump over these spikes. Use rush coil, the jetpack, whatever the hell you want. At this point, bounce your way up this way, and these blocks here will unleash a jack-in-the-box like boxing glove in whatever direction the arrows are pointing. Your jumps off of them will alter their direction. Use the corners of the springs if you don't have the jetpack to get up here and grab the extra life. And while you're here, turn the block this way to blast through this wall. Be careful with your spring jump and you'll get auto sniper bolt. Now all the prices in the store are half off and the items won't bounce off his head anymore. If you head up to just the right of where you went, you'll bounce your way to an E-Tank. These gunners can be annoying because you're bouncing around and your equilibrium might be thrown off and if you fall back down, you'll have to bounce your way back around again. The junk shield works pretty well against these guys, just watch where you land. Not long after that is Spring Man. He's really easy as long as you have the Slash Claw. Ordinarily, he'll fire off these spiked springs and bounce around and throw you into the ceiling. Both of these attacks can deal some damage. But if you have the Slash Claw, you can keep him on his easy attack the whole time, just like Junk Man. Hit him with the claw right away, he'll spring up into the air and fire a long spring punch twice. Slide away from them and hit him with the claw again. He'll go back up and do the same attack, so keep going until he's dead. You'll get the Wild Coil, which are two coil shots that go to either side of you, and you can also charge them up. It's kind of a weird weapon, but I guess what else are they going to use? For the third time in a row, you'll fight a robot master that starts with an S, in this case, Shade Man. This level is loaded with spooky shit, crows, zombies, all of which are robots. Some of these knights in the background's heads will roll off without warning as you walk by them and chuck boomerangs at you. Try to sneak your way by them so you can quickly retreat and take them down. Use the junk shield to keep these bats at bay and slide quickly under these booby traps or bait them into falling before walking over them, whichever tickles your fancy. Then you'll face this jack-o'-lantern mini boss. It'll bounce around a few times, slide under it on the third bounce. That one has the most height. It'll then open up and try to kill you with green projectiles. Hit it with the thunderbolt, making sure you aim dead center. It's kind of sensitive with the accuracy. Keep the thunderbolt equipped, because both the sniper Joe and these things are pretty susceptible to it. One shot and they're done. 
can't see shit in this section here, and you can't light up these candles with any of the weapons that you have, but the Thunderbolt can give a quick glimpse of what's around. Slide under here to get the extra life, but quickly slide back so you don't sail off into the spikes. Keep the thunder rolling to see what's ahead of you, jump over platforms, and shoot the bats. Then you'll be on the short platform that raises up while zombies attack. Throw the junk shield on and let them walk into you. Replenish your shield as necessary. Then you'll encounter Base, who apparently has just gotten his ass kicked and starts a woe is me ordeal, telling Mega Man to fight alone. Mega Man tells him to grow a pair and go to Dr. Light's lab and get fixed up. Base agrees, thanks Mega Man, and takes off. Shade Man awaits. He'll fly around the air and dive down and attempt to suck your robot blood. He'll sometimes land and fire off a gun that'll freeze you and send the noise crush, a sound wave that's so devastating it's fatal. If you hit him with the wild coil, he'll go back into the air, and that's what you want him to do anyway. The easiest way to avoid his dive attacks is to stand directly underneath him and slide away. He'll give himself away by pausing for a second while in midair. After you slide, hit him with the wild coil. You can charge it up while he's floating around to do more damage, but if you miss, you'll use up a lot more of the coil, so your accuracy should influence your decision. Once he's dead, you'll get the noise crush, which is the deadly sound wave I mentioned earlier. You can also increase it by bouncing it off the wall back at you. Last robot to take down, Turbo Man. The level starts off with a Sniper Joe driving a modified bulldozer with spikes on the end. Turn around, jump, and shoot while running away and shooting at the shit that's in front of you. It's not nearly as hard as it sounds. These tires that swing from the ceiling will push you back, so when you jump over these spikes down here, make sure that the tire above you passes by before you jump. Then there's this stack of tires in front of you here. You'd think that it's a regular platform, but nope, you're falling right through the tires. If you do, you'll have to battle Bulldozer Joe again and make your way back up. When you climb up this ladder and shoot at these spiked tire guys, drop off with the jetpack and land on this platform. Use Rush Search and you'll find the Rocket Punch Adapter. Once you get to the top of the ladder, head right into this little hidden illusion wall and Proto Man appears, just letting you know that if you get the Rush letter icons that Dr. Light will build you special equipment. And if you already have it, he just lets you know that the suit is too bulky for you to slide. Up ahead is a fucking marathon of these flame blast devices. They'll flash while heating up, giving you enough time to know when it'll shoot. So wait just before it, and proceed after it does. You will be tempted to rush right through it, but trust me, you don't want to do that. Then you'll drop down and be surrounded by flaming gusts similar to Quick Man Stage in Mega Man 2. Move quickly, slide, stay mostly to the left, grab the energy capsule if you need it, grab the extra life if you can, and disregard the E-Tank. Fuck that. You'll land on this truck, and when you get to the front of it, it'll spit missiles out of its mouth that come back towards you. Jump over them and fire the thunderbolt into its eyes when you get a clear shot. Turbo Man has two attacks. He'll transform into a car and cruise in your direction, or he'll fire the scorch wheel at you. If you get caught in the scorch wheel, you'll burn up and lose a decent amount of health. And since avoiding it isn't easy, I recommend you get that noise crush and hit him with it, because it'll keep him in the car attack. Jumping over him as he drives towards you is the way to go, but he's fast as shit, so you have to get the timing right. Listen to the sounds of his car. Once his gears change, that's when you're going to want to jump, and when he gets out of his metamorphosis, slam the noise crush into him. While he's peeling his tires out, you can amplify the noise crush to give him a bigger hurt. Once he dies, you'll get the scorch wheel, which is just as it sounds, a wheel of flames. And now that you have it, you can head to Slash Man's level and in the woods, burn down the last tree with the scorch wheel, just as Proto Man hinted at earlier. It may not be the most environmentally friendly deed in the world, but you'll rescue Beat from his cage and you'll have four free Beats available. So you go back to Dr. Light's lab and what the hell happened? Well, it turns out that as soon as Light finished repairing base, he freaked out, stole the parts for the new enhancements that were meant for you and Rush, and blasted his way out of there. Dr. Wily somehow taps into Light's equally suspicious surveillance system and boasts about creating base and programming them to trick Mega Man into joining forces and getting on the inside and grabbing the enhancements. So now it's on to take Wily down. Again.